Kelly from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Sunday, October 6th. Okay, so we have the moon in Scorpio here all day. We will see the moon go void, of course, at 6.52 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're locking into Sagittarius energy at 7.35 p.m. And again, Eastern Standard Time. So not a huge window of time where the moon will be void. And of course, that works in our favor because things are already confusing. They're already uncertain. They're already unstable. They're already pretty shaky. We don't need any more of that particular energy. And of course, that's what happens when the moon is void, of course. Now let's talk about the transition from Scorpio energy to Sagittarius energy. Now in Scorpio energy, we have the detective hats on. We are deep diving in our shadow work. We are asking this deep seated questions of ourselves, of the people of the world around us in order for us to gain perspective, get the answers that we need in order to make an informed decision. We have intensified emotions in order for us to realize where we're being pulled away from certain things, pulled closer to certain things. And of course, the major change that is taking place is in our inner realm, our emotions, our intuition, trying to show us where it is that again, we're closing the door on certain topics and themes, and we're ready to open the door up to a new path, new direction, new understanding moving forward. The Sag energy kind of acts as the bright light at the end of what is a very dark tunnel. That is Scorpio energy. That light is a new truth. It's a new direction. It's a new perspective. It is a new, I'm going to call it, opportunity to create a different plan for ourselves to actually move on and move forward. Now that we've done a little bit of digging, now that we have a little bit more information available to us, the Sag energy kind of renews our faith, puts us in a better situation, a better circumstance to see the bigger, broader picture of why it is that we had to go through certain things that we've gone through that have been difficult, that have been tough love life lessons, because again, it puts us in a situation and a circumstance to be empowered, to boss up, to level up, to take power and control over ourselves back and to really, again, allow ourselves to visualize what is possible for us now that we've done the inner work. So there are 10 different aspects popping off here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. We get off to a little bit of a bumpy start to the day. I'm not going to lie about it, okay? The moon in Scorpio going to make a very harsh interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings, who of course is in Gemini energy. Now here's the thing. The Scorpio energy definitely has us more in our intuition, trusting our gut, trusting our higher self. There is a pull that we can't explain. There is a knowing that we can't explain either. Jupiter, who's over here in the Gemini energy that has us divided on the options, the opportunities that we currently have to choose from, has us very divided, talking ourselves into one thing, then talking ourselves out of the other. Jupiter usually brings a certain amount of optimism, of confidence, but this is a negative aspect, which means that we are kind of at odds with our own damn selves. There is a part of our mental plane, of our intellect trying to tell us one thing, but it is in a direct contrast with what our gut, our emotions are telling us. So this is very much a war, an inner conflict, if you will, with what it is that we feel, what it is that we believe without the evidence to prove it versus what we know, what we should be relying on because we have the proof, the evidence, the facts to kind of suggest that this is, again, matter of fact, this is the situation, this is the circumstance. The problem is, is that at this particular juncture, we're a little bit down in the darkness. We're a little bit down in the dumps. We're not even feeling the want, need, or desire to grow, to heal. We're kind of stuck in the darkness. We're stuck in the funk. Now, we can learn a lot sitting in that dark and funk. But at the end of the day, what this particular interaction is trying to show us is where it is that we feel blocked, stunted, paralyzed in the present moment, unable to think about the future, unable to even want to think about the options and opportunities, because there's an emotion that has us stuck here in the present moment. 
We then have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Libra energy that again has us very divided. We're trying to see all sides of the coin. We're trying to see all perspectives. We're trying to challenge, you know, our understanding of certain concepts, but we're hella indecisive. We're kind of flip flopping back and forth one time, you know, one moment we think we know. Then just when we know, we try to talk ourselves out of it. So it doesn't feel like a very good jam in that headspace. Well, Mercury's getting into the boxing ring, fighting it out, squaring off with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger. And Mars in this cancer energy, who is very connected to the past, who is in preservation mode, we are definitely going to feel a lot of agitation taking place, not only in our headspace, but in our conversations. It almost feels like, you know, Mars, he's got ants in his pants. He's hella restless. He wants to take action and make moves, even though there's no action or moves to be taken upon. There is this rushing energy where we just want to hurry up and decide. We want to hurry up and choose. We want to hurry up and move on. But what this is doing is it's pressurizing our headspace. It's creating a sense of urgency that doesn't need to be there. It is putting us in a situation where we're kind of pressurized in our speech. So a lot of the things that we're trying to communicate or coming off very harshly, very straightforward, blunt in your face, which isn't being received by the people by the world around us very well. And it's almost like we're willing to kind of skip some steps in the process here just to get to the destination, even though we realize that it's the journey that's most important and how it is that we're actually getting there. Even more than that, Mercury rules over communication. And like I said, we're already having some issues truly communicating ourselves, really articulating ourselves quite correctly under this influence. And that means that disagreements are highly probable. Why? Because we're impatient, we're rushing things, we're short, we have a sharp tongue at this particular point. And a lot of the things that we're just spewing out in our verbal vomit is just anger and aggression with our own damn selves. So we're projecting that frustration onto the people, onto the world around us. Now, the moon in Scorpio is going to make a very harsh interaction with Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in Aries energy. And when I say to you that we are picking up all the scabs, okay, all the wounds that we've been healing, the scabs are forming nicely. We're almost, you know, semi healed in those particular arenas. We are so in the darkness at this point. We are stuck in our emotional realm at this point that we actually want to create a little bit of pain, a little bit of trauma within ourselves. Now, that is just the self-sabotaging behavior that tends to come out under the Scorpio influence. And Chiron, because he's the wounded healer, because he's being aspected in the not nicest way, we are not thinking about healing. We're not thinking about growing and evolving. We're thinking about picking those scabs off and starting from square one. This is definitely an energy that we have to watch out, especially coming out of that Mercury square Mars, where there's a lot of animosity, a lot of unfocused energy that we could very easily project onto people that do not deserve it. So we want to watch out for where the anger, the frustration, where the pain and the trauma of our emotional realm is not being channeled correctly. And we're actually using it against ourselves. The moon is then going to make an awkward interaction with the North Node in Aries energy, that North Node trying to get us on the right path to move on, to grow, to heal, to fix, to repair ourselves. We're not quite there yet. Now, granted, the moon in Scorpio is trying to do the work in our inner realm in order to have a major change of heart, a major transformation of our goals, of our ambitions, of our understanding so that we can put the past behind us and willingly start building a path kind of build that direction to move on to move forward. But this is an awkward interaction. This isn't working so well for us. We kind of see the ability to move on. We kind of see the ability to kind of grow up to kind of get out of our own damn way. But guess what? There is something very appealing about sitting in our own funk and being little, you know, bitter Bettys and negative Nancys and kind of just, you know, poor woe is me. Now, let me just remind you the Scorpio energy. We have to sit in the darkness in order to appreciate the light. We have to sit in our pain in order to realize that we have an ability to turn it into power. But we are definitely not there yet here in the run of the day. 
And as we kind of get going in the day here, we are going to see that darkness kind of be illuminated. But right now we're happy to be sitting in the funk. We're happy to be sitting in the sadness and the anger and in the frustration. Now, here's where things are going to take a little bit of a turn, hopefully for the better. But again, coming out of the darkness is no easy feat. 109 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon in Scorpio energy going to sit across from directly oppose Uranus, the great awakener who was retrograde in this Taurus energy. So first of all, our anxiety, our nerves are going to be popping off. We have that Uranian energy affecting the central nervous system. And again, just a reminder, Uranus being retrograde in this Taurus energy is supposed to be illuminating where it is that we're stuck in the past, where it is that we're holding on to dead weight to a dead horse, if you will, to situations and circumstances, people, places and things that we've outgrown that can no longer teach us anything. But again, we are very happy to sit in the funk to sit in the darkness of our experiences. Now this opposition because again, Scorpio energy and Taurus energy sit across from each other in the zodiac wheel, the Scorpio energy needs to provide a death ending enclosure in order for something new to be born and created. That's that Taurus energy. Emotionally speaking, we're at odds with our own damn selves. We are realizing that we're choosing to stay in this negative narrative, choosing to stay in this negative funk, choosing to hold on to the dead weight of the past. And it's at this particular juncture that we realize that we can change it. We can step out of it at any given moment. Are we choosing to do that? Are we choosing to walk away from it? Are we choosing to walk into the light? Not quite yet. We do have the sun in Libra energy making a very harsh interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. When I say to you that now we are just going to be whiny complainers where we're very happy to sit in the funk, picking our scabs, crying over the fact that we're bleeding again. When I say to you that now we're going to get a little bit of a harsh reality check. When I say to you that now what we're going to have to kind of figure out is where we have a want, need and desire to have fun, to be happy, to be healthy. But yet there is something blocking us. We're choosing to hold on to these blocks that are preventing us from moving on. This is going to illuminate where our responsibilities are because we're kind of down on ourselves like, oh, I made this commitment. I got to do this, 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 and this before I can have fun, before I can do what I need to do for myself. We're getting a little bit hostile, a little bit angry, a little bit frustrated with the commitments that we've made either to roles and responsibilities or to other people. What we want to do is we want to take care of ourselves. We want to be happy. We want to bring happiness and joy and pleasure back into our lives. But we feel like we can't because we have all of these things to do before we give ourselves permission to indulge in what makes us happy. What this is going to do, though, is it's going to put us in a very calculated time out, meaning we're going to take a break from pushing forward because we would rather just sit around and complain about it and procrastinate about it. But this is actually good because what we're currently pushing forward to try and manifest, to try and bring to life, to try and make happen isn't actually in alignment with this new version of self. And so this particular time out, even though we're going to be whiny, criny little biatches, if I do say so myself, um, what it is going to do is allow us to see where it is that we have some adjustments to make. First of all, we have to adjust our mood and our attitude. Secondly, we have to adjust our inner narrative, our inner dialogue. And then third, we got to get out of our own damn way. We have to grow up. We have to kind of glow up. We have to do better. We know better. There's no reason why we can't do better, but we have to choose this for ourselves. This is the pivotal point, I would say, in the day where we start kind of digging ourselves out of this dark pit, out of this dark hole. 2.46 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon in Scorpio is going to revisit with Chiron, this time in a positive interaction. So Chiron being the wounded healer, he's like, you know what? I'm so glad you came back. I'm so glad you're choosing the light. I'm so glad you're choosing to heal. I'm so glad you're choosing to kind of grow, to evolve, to move on. The moon in Scorpio, Again, trying very hard to kind of break away from the darkness, break away from the funk. We are actually starting to see where it is that guess what? We just chose to waste the majority of the day just sitting around whining and crying and complaining when we could have been doing a lot more to make the major changes, the major transformations in our inner realm. Nonetheless, we're going to call it as a 
win. We're going to see it as it actually unfolds. And we are more willing now to at least grab a Band-Aid, kind of Band-Aid those scabs back up, really take care of ourselves, understand where it is that we've been, we've been mean to ourselves and where it is that we have to do better. We have to take care of ourselves in the way that we would so easily take care of other people. The moon is then going to trine, beautiful interaction, with Neptune, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. This is going to help us out big time. Why? Because a trine means that we are growing up, moving on, evolving, healing. We are seeing some progress. And because this is water on water action, it means that we are getting cleansed, purified from those heavier thoughts, that heavier emotion that we definitely been sitting in for the majority of the day. This is when we get a little bit of a reminder of where it is that we know better. So we got to do better, a little bit of a refresher in our soul in our spirit, in our faith, in our trust that everything is happening exactly as it should. This is a major pivot point in us trusting our intuition, trusting our higher selves to kind of, you know, get out of the funk, choose to, sh to really shine a light on the positives, on what is working, on who is there for us, who is helping us, who is encouraging us. We need to kind of adopt the attitude of gratitude. And this is the major pivot point that I feel we are bringing ourselves out of that bunk, out of the darkness. We do have the moon in Scorpio semi-squaring, which is just a little bit of tension and conflict with the sun in Libra energy. So again, anytime that the moon and the sun are coming together, there's going to be an aha moment. There's going to be an emotional awareness of what we want, need and desire and therefore what we have to leave behind, what we have to close the door upon. Now, this is a semi square. So a little bit of tension, a little bit of conflict again, coming out of the darkness, stepping into the light. We can see things differently. And the moon being in Scorpio energy, definitely ready to boss up into a new level of empowerment to take control over our emotions and our mental plane back. The sun shining very light, very light, very bright in this Libra energy is illuminating where it is that, again, we have to bring ourselves back into balance. We have to bring that negative ass narrative back into a sweet spot, those overwhelming, darker emotions back into a neutral spot in order for our heart and in our head to get on the same page so that we can prepare to take action to make moves to close the door behind us and to open the door into our future now the last thing that we have going on here today the moon in scorpio going to sextile beautiful interaction with pluto who rules over the scorpio energy pluto of course is retrograde at the 29th critical crisis karmic degree of this capricorn energy we love scorpio and capricorn energy working together because when you walk or earth, something grows. Now, Pluto being retrograde and Capricorn energy for the next couple of days, because we will see Pluto go direct here this week. Again, listen to the Ascension forecast for this week, if you haven't already. Pluto is giving us a little bit more time to be illuminated to where the structures, the foundations of the old world that we had built out of the old version of self, where there are some blockages, where we are being kind of challenged, held back, restricted, if you will, from moving on and moving forward until we wrap up certain chapters, certain cycles. The moon sextiling Pluto in this way means that we are out of the darkness and we are standing in the light. We do have a different mood, a different attitude. We're tapping into the warrior type of spirit. A major change, major transformation has taken place within us throughout the course of this day. And we do have a good perspective on where it is that, again, we can go visit the darkness, but we have no business setting up camp there. So emotionally speaking, we are definitely going to feel this warrior mood, this warrior attitude kind of take over. And we are rearing to go ready to really put that darkness behind us. And of course, at 6.52 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the moon is going to go void, of course. And we lock into that Sag energy at 7.35 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we are going to sit in that particular Sag energy 
for the rest of the day. There are no more aspects here today. So again, we just have an opportunity to now be sitting in the light, sitting in a new perspective, sitting in a new truth. And again, building our optimism, our faith, our confidence back in order for us to figure out where it is that we want to go from here.